What is up my boys? It is your boy Nistro here and today I got you guys another OCG based deck profile since you know they are in link format already and as I did say before I do want to keep my uh, deck profiles from now on you know in link format you know if if possible because you know there are going to be some decks that I are that I am going to do that won't be in link format yet but they probably will be link format ready if you get what I mean so yeah so this is true draco harpies um we got top the locals and you know some of you may like not like the fact that you know i'm doing decks that top locals but at the end of the day it's like it, it's still something like pretty legit to top the locals um because it, it's like you're still beating over at least one or two decks from the meta like you may not do like nine ten rounds but even like five six rounds is still something um to get first place after five or six rounds still gives you a, a bit of credibility it, it, it like even if not a lot of it it gives you some credibility so um this deck may not seem like a, a, a good amount like at the seams but like it actually has a whole lot of synergy to it and i'll definitely get to that and uh, as you can see here at the bottom i do have a uh, Link Slayer, but um, that is just a proxy for a decode talker since um, Yu-Gi-Oh Pro doesn't have Link monsters yet. You know, I'm just using monsters from uh, Varanes just to you know show that this is a Link monster. I mean, when when I get to the card, I'll Photoshop D decode talker onto there. But uh, for me, I'll, I'll just be looking at Link Slayer while talking about decode talker. So yeah. Um, so starting off the deck profile, we have Mariam, the true Draco Phoenix, which is weird that she's called a true Draco because it acts like a true king in its effect, but it's called a true Draco, so I found that weird. But, um, yeah, so it's pretty much a win true king monster, um, and, um, its effect is that when you summon it by destroying two wins, you get to banish the top four decks of your opponent's, uh, top four cards of your opponent's deck. Um, unfortunately not face down, but still, you know, they, they do lose four cards if they don't focus on banishing. Um, and when it's destroyed by a card effect, you get to add one non wind worm type monster from your deck to your hand and you go and use each effect once per turn. So if you pop her with diagram, um, and you search masterpiece, you can actually search a second masterpiece thanks to her effect, which is actually pretty useful. Um, so, I can't really hate on it. And, uh, you know, you can always search it as well, since you do play Triple Diagram, Triple Terraforming. Or it, it is True Draco, so, it, you know, you, you already know what you're getting into. Uh, next is Double Masterpiece. Masterpiece is, like, the the meat of the True Draco deck. It's, like, the, the big boss monster. And, you know, usually the hardest to get over, especially if you don't have Kaijus. Or, you know, big monsters. And it's uh, the fact that he can, you know, has a quick effect that can pop cards during, you know, either player's turn. It's he definitely, it definitely helps make him into a real threat most of the time he even hits the board. And um, you do have lots of ways to tribute um, spells and traps in this deck. Um, I mean, lots of spell and trap cards to tribute in this deck, like a Hysteric Sign, your True Draco cards, Hysteric Party. So there definitely is a lot of synergy there. Just like with Metal Foes, you know, you're using Masterpiece with cards that are outside of its archetype, you know, like a completely different archetype, but still synergize with him so well. And uh, I know Masterpiece should probably get limited <laughs> one day. Uh, maybe not now, maybe not in any, like, uh, maybe not for another format or two, but I know Masterpiece is going to get either banned or limited um, at some point because the fact this guy is also unaffected by the type of card you tribute him with is just what makes him so strong. Like being able to be unaffected by monster and spell effects, um, like especially when you use something like a Stormforth, is freaking crazy. And it's pretty amazing. I, I don't hate it, but um, it, it, it does it does win you games <laughs> a good amount of the time. So, yeah. 
Uh, so one Harpy's Pet Dragon, uh, you don't want to play more than one in any Harpy build ever, because you don't even want to draw into it. I mean, maybe in this deck, because, you know, you're playing true Dracos, and you could just, like, pop it with Diagram or something. But most times you want to keep him in the deck until you, uh, until you get, like, a Chandler, and then use Chandler's effect to bring him out. But if not, then you don't want to see him. <laughs> so double uh, Majesty Maiden to true Draco Mage. Um, so... You can tribute a uh, continuous spell or trap card for a tribute summon. And, you know, since she's only level 5, you know, it's only one tribute. So one continuous spell or trap card. And then once per turn, during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or a fact while control this tribute summon card, you get to add a true Draco or true king monster from your deck to your hand. So you get to add another copy of her, a uh, big bird over here, or masterpiece. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess it's pretty good. For, for a one tribute monster, um, it's definitely not that bad. Uh, so Harpy Queen, um, she's just your field spell searcher, your Harpy's hunting ground searcher, not any field spell. You, you discard her, and she, she searches you a, a Harpy's hunting ground. Um, but if you already have it, she is going to be a 19 beater, um, you know, when you know I'm summoner. Or if you have Harpy's hunting ground, she's going to be 21 beater when you know I'm summoner. Um... And she's treated as Harpy Lady while it's on the field or in the graveyard. So, um, a lot of these effects, well, not a lot of them, actually. Uh, not, not anymore. Like, back in the day, it used to be you, you required Harpy Lady a lot. The only real one that you require Harpy Lady for these days is, like, a uh, Elegant Egotist. But these days, not Harpies aren't really focused around, like, the base Harpy Lady anymore. So, Or Sisters, at that. Uh, so one Cyber Harpy Lady, she's just treated as Harpy Lady, um, and I, I found it funny that this guy didn't play three Harpy Ladies, because it's like, you know, like, it's always been, like, a problem before, like, a certain point that Harpy players could only play three Harpy Lady monsters, because back in the day, they were all called Harpy Lady, like, always, and now, you know, now, since we have more Harpy monsters that aren't always treated as Harpy Lady, like, you, you can be more lenient about it. Like, we don't need three of them. But, uh, I, I just find it funny how, you know, times change. So, next we have Triple Harpy's Harpist. Um, she is pretty, she's pretty great. So, what she does is that, um, she's treated as Harpy Lady while on the field of grave. So, she doesn't count for the Harpy Lady count in the deck, which is... Pretty amazing. Actually, all, all the Harpies other than, like, two of them have that now, so um, it definitely works out. And, you know, you can use each of her effects once per turn. So her first effect is that when she's normal summoned, you get tired of wing beast monster you control uh, other than herself and one face of monster your opponent controls and return them to your hand. I mean, to to the hand, you know. Um, so kind of like a, a, a Karen... I guess, uh, except she can't target herself, which she would be amazing if she could target herself, but unfortunately not. But uh, she does, you know, she does have the potential to get rid of problem monsters, so that's definitely a good thing. She is level 4 and 17 attack, that isn't bad. And during the end phase, if this card was sent to the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can add a level 4 wing beast monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand. And, uh,. So she's kind of like a Skarm for Wing Beast. I remember when Blackwing players said they were going to play her. I still haven't seen too many <laughs> Blackwing players uh, try her out. And um, same thing for Raid Raptors. I haven't seen too many Raid Raptor players try her out either. Um, she is pretty good. So, I mean, and it's like generic Wing Beast support. So it's, it's, it's definitely not bad. Um, yeah, so three is definitely a good ratio. So, Triple Harpy's Chandler, um, if you uh, drop a Harpy card, you can special summon one Harpy monster from your deck in defense position, except another copy of herself. So, that even means your Harpy's Pet Dragon, and that's probably going to be the one you want to go into. Because while you control a Dragon-type monster, um, Harpy's Chandler level becomes 7, so, and since Pet Dragon is a 7, that opens up rank 7's, rank 7 plays in this deck. And, um... The good thing about Harpy's Chandler is that you get to drop a Harpy card and not just Harpy Monsters. Although it won't help you that much because the only Harpy card that isn't a Harpy Monster is the Field Spell. So, sad boys out here. But if you do pull her effect off, it is pretty good. Um, 
since you know rank sevens are always are always welcome here. So one Harpy Lady one, she's always treated as Harpy Lady. She's one of the original three, you know. And while she's on the field, all Harpy Lady monsters, no, not all Harpy Ladies, all wind monsters gain 300 attack. And since pretty much your whole deck is wind, um, everybody pretty much gets the buff, um, except for like Masterpiece. But you know, Masterpiece doesn't need it anyway. Uh, so one Harpy Dancer, which is one of the ones I'm actually unfamiliar with. Um, so her effect is you can target one wind monster you control, return it to the hand, then you can normal summon one wind monster. You can only use this effect of Harpy Dancer once per turn. And this Harpy Lady in the field in Graveyard. So I guess it helps with um, your Majesty Maiden to True Draco Mage, because you get to bring back Harpy monsters. Like maybe if you have like a Chandler. Uh, you go Chandler and you normal summon out, or you special summon out like Dancer or something, I don't know. And then you summon out Majesty by returning your Chandler, so you have a Chandler for next turn as well. Um, that could be a play. Uh, I'm not too familiar with this deck, so I'm not sure exactly um, why you'd use it. Maybe if you want to like bring back Harpist and then normal summon Harpist again to use her Harpist effect again, and then send back two monsters instead of just one that could work out as well so it definitely has a few plays in this deck it, it, it's, it's not bad next we have a uh, Dra dragoonity dark spear which i was a little surprised to see at first it's level three dragon tuner and um its effect is once per turn you contribute a dragon type dragoonity monster to select and special summon one level four lower wing beast type monster from your graveyard and you know all of a sudden the lights start to click um the problem is, is that, you know, you're going to have to tribute itself since it is the only tuner that you play. You're cutting out your synchro plays when you decide to tribute it, but, you know, you do play cards that could bring it back. But even then, it's like sometimes you are going to want to go into a rank four more than uh, synchro summon. So it's definitely understandable. Um, and it, it, like, I really like how, you know, it, it's, it's like there's a lot of one ofs that, you know, are just so decent in this deck is it, it just helps so much i don't know I, I haven't seen harpies too much so like seeing this um it, you know doing well especially in link format um is definitely uh it's still a bit a uh, big deal to me so uh we have harpies fetter duster which actually is searchable um by thanks to hysteric sign which is a plus three if you use it correctly but um yeah, just pop all spawn chop cards your opponent control. It's just one card answer to back row. Um amazing card. I'm mad that the OCG has it, but we don't still. But uh I'm sure we'll get it back eventually. So one soul charge. Um it's 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 more just a comeback thing, maybe gets you a few extra plays. Uh I'm not entirely sure. Um I know with Dark Spear it could definitely be good. So Triple terraforming, you do play four field spells, so it's definitely understandable. Uh, one elegant egotist, so while you control a harpy lady, so, so if harpy lady is on the field, which pretty much every harpy monster in this deck is treated as harpy lady, you get to special summon a harpy lady or harpy lady sisters from your hand or deck. Now, the only problem is uh, it doesn't summon from the graveyard A, and B, it only summons from the hand or deck. So the only monsters that are, that can be treated as Harpy Lady in the deck are Cyber Harpy Lady and Harpy Lady 1. So unfortunately, it doesn't do that much for the deck since uh, Harpy Lady 1 and Cyber Harpy Lady uh, aren't really big deals by themselves. And uh, Elegant Egotist, um, it is searchable as well, so uh, it, it is good at a one of. So one Storm 4, if you do play your Majesty Maiden and your uh, Masterpiece, so, you know, you just take up opponent's monster um, instead of using your own. So definitely always useful. You're probably always going to see it with uh, True Dracos because just of how good it synergizes with it. Triple Hysteric Sign. Now this card is, I think, the whole reason why I believe Harpies are amazing. Like, it, like this card has always intrigued me. Because Konami made this card a plus three. Maybe not all at the same time. And I guess that's why it's allowed. <laughs> like, it hasn't been, like, touched yet or anything. Also because, you know, the Harpy monsters by themselves aren't really that much of a big deal. But still, this card is a plus three. 
when used correctly. Now, uh, let's get into it. So when this card is activated, you add one Elegant Egotist from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So if you already use your Elegant Egotist, you just bring it back from the graveyard. Like, it's, it's, it's a one for one at that. So it's already one for one, right? So during the end phase of the turn, this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard. Uh, you add up to three Harpy cards with different names from your deck to your hand. Now notice, it says Harpy cards. It doesn't say Harpy monsters. So you can search Feather Duster, you can search your Feather Storm, you can search your Field Spell uh, if you need to, and you know, any pretty much any Harpy monster. It's it's pretty crazy. And although they do have to be different names, you can't just add three Feather Storm or three Chandler. I don't know why you would want to add three Chandler. But, um, that's not really a problem. It's, it's you, you probably want to add different ones anyway. And um, it definitely synergizes well with Fetterstorm because Fetterstorm, you can activate it from the hand while you control a Harpy monster. And since it's a trap card, that can be done during your opponent's turn as well. Um, the only real downside is that you can't use both effects in the same turn. And, you know, the searching only happens during the end phase. So let's say you're playing, I mean, e like, even if you don't use the Elegant Eutis effect, this card is still a plus two. Um, and, you know, like, using it with, like, a Draconic Diagram, where it's like, okay, I can pop it from my hand, search a Masterpiece, summon out that Masterpiece, during the end phase, I'm gonna get, uh, Harpy's Feather Storm, Harpy's Feather Duster, uh, any Harpy Monster I want, and then still have Masterpiece on the field, and then next turn, if I also control another Harpy Monster, um, I get to activate Feather Storm from my hand, where you can't activate Monster Effects for, pretty much for the entire turn. Well, you can activate them. They'll just be negated. I mean, if you feel like playing, paying costs, if you're playing like Mermails or something. And it's not just on the field. It just says negate any monster effects your opponent activates. Like Harpy Sputter Storm is real broken. So Hysteric Sign, I think, is definitely one of the reasons why I believe this deck actually has a lot of potential. But again, um... You know, if you already use something like uh, your Harpy Sputter Duster or your Harpy's Fetter Storm. Well, I mean, you have three of those. You probably didn't use them already. But, um, uh, like, it feels like the targets, other than, like, Fetter Storm and Duster and maybe, like, Chandler, they aren't really all too great. But still, having that card advantage could net you a win. Um, especially because of cards like a Hysteric Party, which I'll get into later. I, I've been mixing and matching too many cards, you know. Usually, I do them all in order, but, you know, this deck, it, it's just... I, I don't know too much about it, so I've been trying to link it as I go along. Uh, no pun intended. So, uh, Succession of the True Draco. During your main phase, you draw cards equal to the number of true, different True Draco and True King cards. Uh, card types uh, sent from the field to the graveyard this turn. Nine times out of ten, you won't use that effect um, at all. But, you know, if you, if you ever have the option to, I, I would suggest just get a free card. <laughs> uh, maybe if you, like, tribute another True Draco card... Or like a monster, and like a, maybe your like if you trigger your Majesty Maiden and you're like a revival of True King, or if you pop your uh, True Jaco Phoenix with Diagram, and have your succession of True Jaco uh, on the field, or you can even search it with uh, with like Diagram. So if you like pop, so if you activate Diagram, pop your True Jaco Phoenix, uh, search your succession, and then True Jaco Phoenix activates and searches you. Um, Masterpiece, then you know you can activate your uh, succession of the true Draco and draw a card because you because Mariam was sent from the field to the grave. Well, not from the field, the hand to the grave this turn. Oh no, it has to be from field to grave. Oh man, all right. So if you tribute Masterpiece using your Majesty Maiden, then I guess you can draw a card. Uh, sucks has to be from field to grave. I would like it a whole lot better if it were just sent to the graveyard this turn. So, um just like every true Draco spell or trap card, um, during your main phase, you get to double summon, um, w but only to tribute summon a true Draco or true king monster. So you can tribute itself to summon out a majesty maiden. And when it's sent from field to grave, you pop a spell or trap card on the field. It has three effects. You can activate all three effects in the same turn if you wanted, as long as it's only once per turn. So um, definitely helpful. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the, the normal what you'd expect from True Draco cards. I mean, at this point, I assume you should all know what True Dracos do, but, you know, in case you don't. So, one, uh, and that's, I was about to say one, Triple Draconic Diagram, uh, the best searcher, probably in the game right now, <laughs> uh, is $90 field spell, so it's probably is such the best searcher in the game. So, uh, you pop any card in your hand or graveyard um, and add a True Draco or True King from your deck to your hand, and uh, all True King and True, King, True Draco monsters gain to attack and defense, but most time, but if you tribute summon Masterpiece using a spell card, um, you won't get that attack boost for Masterpiece, sadly. But um, if you tribute summon a True Draco, or tribute summoned True Draco and True King monsters that will be destroyed by battle each turn, the first one that will be destroyed is not destroyed. So if they try to hit Masterpiece by battle, it, um, it's, it's not going to die because of your Draconic Diagram, which is definitely real helpful. Um, again, it's a $90 field spell, so <laughs> of course it's going to be amazing. Uh, next, we have one Harpy's Hunting Ground. It's uh, the Harpy field spell that you search with Queen, or you can search with Hysteric Sign if, if you feel the need to do that. So all winged beast type monsters on the field gain 200 attack and offense. And when any harpy lady or harpy lady sister monsters are normal or special summoned, the, the player who conducted the summon targets one spell trap card on the field and destroys that target. Uh, two things about this card is that the first is that when you summon the effect to destroy spell trap card is mandatory. So if anything, you should probably target itself if you feel like you have another spell trap card that's worth keeping. Um, in this deck, I don't really see too many cards that are like, okay, maybe I shouldn't destroy. Like, if you're like, if you had a Solemn Strike set face down, like, let's say, like, this deck had Solemn Strike in it, and you had Harpy's Underground, and those are your only two spell and trap cards on the field, and you normal summoned out a Harpy monster, you would be forced to destroy either the Harpy's Hunting Ground or the Solemn Strike. And nine times out of ten, you would want to destroy the Harpy's Hunting Ground because there's no need to destroy a strike because it summoned out a monster. So it's sad that it has to be mandatory. The second thing about this card is that it's uh, it applies to both players. So it'll be funny to see a Harpy mirror match where both players have Hunting Ground on the field. There's no need for uh, opponent, like if you both have Hunting Ground on the field, there's no need for you to target b uh, both Hunting Grounds unless you know, like your opponent doesn't have any back row. Um, but yeah, you could probably target their, hunt, their hunting ground or something. I don't know. Um, but you know, like if you both have hunting ground on the field, you summon out a harpy monster. You get to pop two spell trap cards on the field. But you know, when they summon out a harpy monster, they get to do the same thing. So um, maybe pop one of the hunting grounds and a back row. Your opponent controls if they only have one back row. But if they have two back row, just pop both of those bad boys. <laughs> um, and it's not once per turn as well. So every single time a harpy monster is summoned. Um, it's, uh, you get to pop a spell trap card. You have to pop a spell trap card. So just make sure that if anything, you target itself before you target another spell trap card. And, uh, you only need one because more often you're going to need diagram on the field just to search your true Dracos and, um, hunting ground on the field does nothing for you. Like in like the long run, it just does like, it just gets rid of back row slowly. Um, so there's always that. Uh, triple Harpies Fetterstorm, uh, probably the best trap card they have given Harpies. And no, uh, there's only really, there's really only two of them, so it's not that much of a difference. Um, so while you control a wind wing beast type monster until the end of the turn, negate any effects your any monster effects your opponent activates. So that includes hand, field, grave, um, anything. Um, banish zone. <laughs> I, I, I lost my train of thought for a second. But if you control a harpy monster, you can activate this card from your hand. Unfortunately, harpy's brother is not a card anymore, but harpy's pet dragon is still a card. So in case you control a harpy's pet dragon, I don't know why you would control a harpy's pet dragon only, but uh, in case you do, um, you can still activate it from your hand. And um, a discard in its owner spell and trap card is destroyed. In its owner spell and trap zone is destroyed by an opponent's card effect. You can add a harpy's feather duster from your deck to your hand. Um, nice synergy. 
but Harpy's Fetter Duster is already searchable with Hysteric Sign, so that effect kinda isn't necessary unless you don't get Hysteric Sign. Um, then you just set one of these as like a bluff or something, and if they Twin Twister it, then you'd have to choose between searching Fetter Duster or negating all your opponent's monster effects for the turn. So, um, definitely an amazing card. Um, it's nice to see Harpies get that support still. But uh, I, I do still feel like they need something else before they can really like, become like a better deck. So next we have a Revival of the True Kings. Uh, True King Revival, I don't know his English name. Um, it's something short and simple. So um, it's like the spell card, obviously, except uh, one of the effects are different, or, or kind of different. Two of the, like, yeah, let, let, let's just talk about it, okay. So if this card is sent from a spell, spell and track cards onto the graveyard, so from the field to the graveyard, pretty much, target one monster on the field and destroy it. Um, it's optional, obviously. But um, it, it is a continuous chop card, so if you tribute summon it, or tribute summon using it, then you get to pop the monster on the field, uh, most likely your opponent's, because I don't know why I would pop your own. Uh, <laughs> and uh, second effect is that once per turn, you can target a true king or true Jaco monster in your graveyard and special summon it in defense position, but you cannot special summon other monsters for this turn. Luckily, it's a chop card, so you can use that during your opponent's turn to get back a monster um, like maybe your Mariam or, uh, your True Jaco Phoenix, but it's going to be summoned in defense mode, and, uh, they don't have that much defense. I mean, Mariam has 21, uh, Majesty Maiden only has 15, so, yeah. Um, so next off, uh, during your opponent's main phase, you can immediately, after this effect resolves, tribute summon, but not set one True Jaco or True King monster, and you're going to use one. You should fuck once per turn, as I did say earlier. Uh, so, it allows you to actually just get a free masterpiece if you have like a Majesty Maiden or another masterpiece in your grave or the Mariam in your grave. Um, it lets you to summon back a monster while also letting you tribute summon those monsters to summon up masterpiece. And uh, you, if you use the third effect, if your opponent has a monster, you can pop that monster, um, and then you know masterpiece will have. Uh, continuous chap card engrave to use for masterpieces effect um, so you can banish and pop a card so yeah uh, definitely pretty nice uh, probably uh, two of is definitely a nice ratio uh, probably for like any true Jaco deck like I would think two of is a nice ratio unless you're playing like pure true Jacos and you know you can bump it up to three so the last chap card in the deck is hysteric party so you activate this card by discarding any card and special summon as many copies as Harpy Lady as possible from your graveyard. So it's like a one for like up to five cards, <laughs> up to five monsters you can summon uh, with a singular card. And the only downside is, is that when this card leaves the field, destroy those monsters. Like though their effects aren't negated, um, nothing really bad happens to them. It's just when it leaves, just pop all of them. Uh, so, the only problem being, as I said before, like, Harpy Lady monsters by themselves aren't really much of a big deal. Um, like, maybe except for Chandler, but even then, like, Chandler is only good during your turn, and Harpy's Harpist is only a searcher, Queen is only a hitter, Cyber Harpy Lady is only a hitter, Harpy Lady 1 is only a hitter, and Queen, uh, no, not Queen, Dancer, Dancer is only a double summon, so... Uh, it could be nice for like ranking fours um, or link summoning even, um, especially. So it definitely isn't a bad card in itself. It just it's mediocre simply because of how mediocre the harpy monsters are, and that's why I feel this deck isn't strong enough because the monsters themselves don't do enough to build the deck up. But like when they synergize with other cards, it definitely is a strong combination. So starting off Synchro Monsters, Stardust Dragon. Now, I, I do feel this guy could have played better Synchro Monsters. That's the only criticism I have about this deck. You probably could have played better Synchro Monsters. I don't know if this guy was just broke because it is a local, so you know, people are, people do uh, go through the struggles, but he could afford three Dragonic Diagrams and the Masterpiece. I heard Diagram was like a rare in OCG, so I'm not entirely sure if it costs money there. Um, but I know two Masterpiece might be uh, a big deal, but um, yeah, so Stardust Dragon, 
Um, you know, like, <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen this in the actual, in, in, in a, like, legit deck. But um, it is going to be good during link format simply because of the whole special summoning from the graveyard thing. If you summon it in a link zone or a link point, you tribute it. When you special summon it back, you get to special summon it in any zone that you want. So you get so you get to put it in like a zone where you don't have a link point and you know your link zone is up and you know next turn. And you know, it's just to save your cards from getting popped. Maybe if you want to keep your diagram from getting popped from like a um what is it? Uh Ghost Ash, uh Joy Spring, I think. Uh, whatever it's actually called. <laughs> I keep forgetting his TCG name because I don't I don't see it enough in, in real life to actually remember its TCG name. Um, you can save your Johnny diagram from like a Ghost Ogre if you have Stardust. You can save it from a Twin Twister. Unfortunately, a lot more people are playing Cosmic Cyclone, so uh, that is something to be wary about. Uh, next off, we have Clearwing Fast Dragon. I don't think this card is released in TCG yet. I don't think. Uh, his pendulum effect isn't that useful because it's only it only applies to speed roids. But its monster effect is a uh, so it's a level seven synchro where you use a tuner plus wind non tuners, which is pretty easy in this deck. So pretty much dark spear and any harpy monster, um, except for Chandler because Chandler will be level seven. So any harpy monster other than Chandler and pet dragon, obviously. Um, so during either player's turn, you can target a face of monster your opponent controls. I'll special summon from the extra deck. And until the end of the turn, it attacks. Its attack becomes zero, and also has its effects negated. And um, when it's destroyed, you place it in the pendulum zone. So yeah, it's, it, it just stops uh, extra deck monsters. Maybe if your opponent has like Omega or something, you can negate that Omega's effect. Like during the standby phase, like not during the main phase. Like don't 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 try to hit Omega during the main phase unless it's with a solemn strike. <laughs> That's the only way you should hit Omega during the main phase. But um. Yeah, uh, Clearwing is Clearwing Fast Dragon definitely has a decent effect uh, for stopping extra monsters. Uh, for Links too, it, it definitely could be a strong contender against Links. Uh, fortunately, there aren't that uh, too many uh, good enough wind decks to use it. I mean, so next we have Black Rose Moonlit Dragon. Uh, when she special summoned, you target a level five or higher monster on the field on your opponent's side of the field. Oh wait. If this card is special summoned or level five or higher monster is special summoned to your opponent's side of the field, target one special monster your opponent controls, return that target to the hand. So it doesn't have to be level five or higher, but you just target any special summon monster. It has to be special summoned though. So it, it definitely is uh, very niche, only usable in certain situations, but it could probably win you a game just because you're sending back a monster. So next we have Ancient Pixie Dragon. So a pretty generic level seven. Um, 21 attack, 3, 3k defense. And so if you don't know what it does, it's, uh, I think I talked about it a bit earlier. You, after resolving a field spell, um, you get to draw a card. So, um, it doesn't mean like a field, like spell effect. So if a field spell is already on the field and you activate its effect, then that, like you don't draw for that. Like just activating the field spell in general, that's when you draw a card. Um, which definitely isn't that, I mean, you could probably wait to activate the field spell, like, if you have the way, if you have a way of making Pixie Dragon, you could probably wait to activate the field spell, um, just so you could draw a card. And then, her second effect is that once per turn, um, if you can target a face-up texture monster on the field, so not just, um, your opponent controls. Unfortunately, it does say target, but you just destroy that tar uh, that card, and there has to be a field spell on the field to activate um, her second effect as well. So, um, she's very field spell oriented, just like the regular ancient fairy dragon. But uh, this one does give you a bit more advantage. Like it, it like it controls your opponent's board and gives you, uh, lets you draw one if you activate a field spell. So, definitely, definitely a good choice in a deck like this. So, going through rank sevens, we do have our generic rank sevens like uh, Red Eyes Metal Flare Dragon. Um, just for st uh, gaming your opponent, like putting them in a corner where if they try to activate anything, they take 500. Um, and then Draco Slack, uh, probably the classic, probably the first good rank seven that came out, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you detach one, summon out two tokens. 
um, which definitely <laughs> might be good in link format. Uh, while you control tokens, you can't be destroyed by battle by card effects. So, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think that has, that'll have too much of a relevance these days, but um, it's, it's, it's just there just in case. And once per turn, you can a mech fan beats monster, including the token, and pop a card in the field. So, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you know what Drago Sack does, so I'm, I'm just not even going to talk about that too much. Uh, big Eye takes monsters your opponent controls to level two rank seven. Two level seven. I said two rank seven. Oh my god. I'm really stumbling today. Now, here's where it gets interesting because they the OCG has Raid Raptor Arsenal Falcon. I know a lot of TCG players are praying for Konami to print this card, and uh, Konami has not answered their prayers, unfortunately. But, uh, two level 7 monsters, once per turn, and, and it's generic as well, so you can play this in any deck that uses level 7s. Once per turn, you detach uh, Exceed Material from this card, special summon the level 4 Wing Beast type monster from your deck. Pretty free. Um, and it's not even like, uh, like, there's no cost or anything, it's just free level 4 Wing Beast type monster from your deck. I, I guess <laughs> Raid Raptors and other Wing Beast deck uh, kind of need this, but... Uh, the other effects aren't relevant to this deck, so I'm just going to skip over them. They're, they're only, they only apply to Raid Raptors, um, and if it has Raid Raptors as succeed material, which you won't because you don't play any. So next we have Harpy's Pet, uh, Phantasmal Dragon, um, or Mirage Dragon, I don't know. Three level four wins, uh, so while it has, so its effects can only be applied while it has a uh, XC material, so... It can attack your opponent directly, so it's 2,000 directly, and um, your opponent cannot target Harvey monsters with effects or for attacks, and that includes himself. So um, it'll be a little better if he said Harpy cards, because then they can target the field spell, but um, I don't think that would matter too much anyway. And then um, during each end phase, or during each of your end phases, you just attach your team tower from him. But if he does stay on the field for all three turns, that is 6,000 damage of attacking directly and he can't be targeted with card effects or for attacks. I remember when Yosenjus played this, man, Yosenjus had a field day, man. Because <laughs> he just attacked directly, okay, my turn, attack directly, it's, it, it's, it's a pretty fun card to use, so. Um, and you know, since this is Harpies, you know, he might as well be here. So double Ice Beast Zero Fine, uh, probably the best Wing Beast succeed or base succeed that I've seen, uh, other than like uh, freaking uh, Castell, since Castell is like the the OG. I think Terrifying was out before Castell actually. Wait, no. Castell was doing some lines, wasn't he? I think you, yeah, Castell. But Ice Beast Terrifying came out in Zexel era. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Still, uh, c c probably okay. Second best Wing B succeed. Uh, c Castell being the best Wing B succeed. So. Once per turn, you detach the XC material from Ice Beast Zero Fine and negate the effects of all face-up cards your opponent currently controls. And if you do, this card gains 300 attack for each face-up card currently on the field, except for herself. Until, and you know, all these effects apply until your next standby phase. So, um, if your opponent has three face-up cards, all those three face-up cards are negated, and if you have any other face-up cards, you'd also count those. So let's say you have another monster in the field. That'll be four face-up cards other than, her, other than herself, and she would be at 3,200 until your next standby phase. So definitely is very useful, and the cards uh, that your opponent controls are negated for their turn. Since, since it's not a quick effect, her effect can only be used during your turn. So, you know, the fact, the fact that it lasts until your next standby phase... Um, also makes it pretty amazing as well since you know they can't use those cards effect during their turn and yeah uh, moving on we have Castell a singular Castell um, I'm pretty sure you, you guys all know what Castell does uh, just send back cards or put them face down so next we have Lightning Shidori um, a card that we all thought Konami would get a lawsuit copyright lawsuit for but unfortunately they did not well not unfortunately i mean that would probably be bad for you yeah if konami got a lawsuit but uh 
when it's it's two level four wind monsters so it definitely works in this deck and one succeed summon you target one set card your opponent controls and return that target to the bottom of, of the deck not the top they don't draw it they don't see it again it goes to the bottom and once per turn, you detach one exceeding token from this card. The target one face up monster, uh, face up card, not even monster. Your opponent controls, return it, that target to the top of the deck. So the face down card gets put at the bottom, and the face up card, once per turn, you can put, put it back on top. So definitely very useful. Um, you know, obviously for extra deck monsters, it'll go back to extra deck stuff. Lastly, we have Digusto. Well, not lastly, actually. I, I forgot I have uh, Link Slayer at the bottom here. So last, we have uh, Digusto Emerald. Uh, just recycles monsters. And you won't use the normal monster effect because you don't play normal monsters. And Link Slayer, which is a proxy for Deco Talker, which you guys will see. Uh, Link 3. Um, and with cards like Hysteric Party and Hysteric Sign, um, it definitely isn't hard to make Link 3s in this deck. Uh, I, I don't think, honestly. And even if it is, I don't think it matters too much because you won't be relying too much on your extra deck anyway. You may only make like one or two synchros per game, if any. Like, if any at all. You, you may only make like one or two synchros or exceeds per, per game. Just, it, it all depends on the situation. Because if you can bring on Masterpiece, Masterpiece by itself is enough to win a game. Like, to be completely honest. And then, like, mixed with, like, this Harpy's Fetter Storm, where they can't activate their effects, and Harpy's Fetter Duster, where you're getting rid of the back row, and, like, Hysteric Sign, where you just, or Hysteric Party, where you just special summon a whole bunch of Harpy monsters at once. It definitely works together. So, but it, it is always nice just to have the Link 3 just in case. And, you know, it does stop cards like uh, Cosmic Cyclone, and uh, anything that targets cards on your field. So, Deco Talker is definitely... A uh, good choice of Link Monster for a deck like this. So, I guess that's all for now. I I, I didn't see a side deck in, in these lists. The OCG Weekly uh, deck lists don't usually have side decks, and uh, I don't mind. But it, you know, it will be nice to see if they actually sided anything. You know, based on the format, so we can know what's side when Link format comes around. But yeah, I mean, this deck is still pretty interesting, and um, I would definitely give it a shot um, during Link format if. Diagrams were a $90 card <laughs> and Masterpiece wasn't still expensive over here. But we don't have Harpy's Fetter Duster here yet, so it definitely may not be a TCG deck worth playing out. And we don't have Arsenal Falcon either, so that might be something to consider. Uh, Fast Dragon, we I think we should be getting this soon, but I don't know exactly when. And um, I, I, I'm still irked by the fact Hysteric Sign is a plus three. Or has the possibility to be a plus three by itself in a singular card. And it's just disgusting. <laughs> I mean, especially with the synergy in this deck, it isn't hard to pull off. So, um, yeah, I guess that's all for now. I'm done rambling. This was Nistro here. If you enjoyed, um, just tell me in the comments if you have any questions or comments. Or, uh, well, put a comment in the comments, obviously. Uh... Or any concerns or anything or anything I missed, anything you want me to talk about next, any OCG decks you want me to talk about. Um, I know one guy requested me to talk about 60 card True Draco Metaphose Cosmo because I did a 40 card, my own version. Well, not my own version. I copied an OCG topped deck and then I did Yu Gi Oh! Pro Duels in the deck profile for that. But um, somebody asked me to do a 60 card version, so I'll definitely look into that in, in the future. But uh, for now, I guess that is it. This was Nisho here. Peace.